Hey everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of A View from Tracy's Point. And today we are going to talk about the music industry. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys um, have been following the story about Taylor Swift and how she um, lost the opportunity to reclaim her masters from her uh, publishing company. And so it got me to thinking about the whole R. Kelly situation and how there's this um, conspiracy theory that um, this whole saga that he's going through with these allegations are somehow um, were put into play by Sony and that they're trying to um, keep him from reclaiming his masters. And I believe I've mentioned this before that I don't believe that conspiracy theory. I honestly believe that the whole R. Kelly situation is about um, power and control, but I think it is also about Dream Hampton uh, being in, you know, the company of the Ava DuVarnays of the world and seeing Ava's success and how Ava, you know, has done these documentaries on, um, you know, the prison system and, you know, other things that she's done. And I think that Dream Hampton saw that success and she basically wanted to make her mark on the industry and so she needed to come up with a story that would be compelling and that would catch the attention you know of a big audience and so she decided that she was going to choose um r kelly so we all know that the production of the docuseries started like two years ago that you know it was in the making and I just believe, that's what I believe, that Dream Hampton was trying to make a name for herself and Lifetime bought into it and gave her the platform in which to um, do all of that. And I actually had done a lot of research a few months ago on the recording industry and I was going to put together a series of videos just walking people through how everything's, um, how People go through the recording industry, starting with a talent being discovered, you know, the roles of each individual that's involved with getting that person to the record label, you know, what happens after they're at the record label, you know, following the path of how masters work and just that whole industry. But it is so complicated. And every time I would get down, so I did the research and everything, but every time I got ready to sit down to do the videos, I was just like, okay, how can I say this so that people understand, like put it in the simplest form so it doesn't like, you know, become too mind boggling for the listener because it was definitely mind boggling for me, <laughs> you know, trying to sort through the information and make sure that I understood. I still may go ahead and do that series at some point, but right now today, I just want to talk about the whole conspiracy theory about R. Kelly and it, the whole Taylor Swift situation kind of brings it front and center about how this whole process works and how it's difficult for artists to um, get their masters back. And Billboard.com, they actually um, did a, a chronology of artists that you know challenged the record labels and were able to get their masters back or were not able to get their masters back. And so I thought that was interesting. So for those not familiar with what the masters are, masters are the original recordings of music. And they include the composition of the music, the lyrics, all of that. And so it's on a master copy that is held by the copyright owner, which is typically the music label. And so the reason artists sign over their masters to the music label is because when an artist comes out, there is a lot of money that goes behind making an artist, you know, getting them visibility, getting their music played on the radio, um, getting their music into stores, booking concerts, 
All of that uh, falls on the record label when they own the masters. And so they put the money up front for the studio time for musicians, you know, to make sure everybody gets paid to make sure that your music is distributed to make sure, you know, everything that needs to happen happens. And so what happens is that takes millions of dollars. And especially when you have an artist like R. Kelly, who was blowing up in the 90s when he was signed. And so there's all this money that he probably, well, we know he didn't have himself. So to get to where he needed to be, he signed his contract, giving the music, um, label you know the rights to the music so as time goes on and more albums come out there's more money that's being spent and so the artist ends up usually owing the record label so even when they get to the end of their career they have taken so much money from the record label that they usually end up owing the record label and that's why they can't get their masters back. And I suspect that that, you know, probably was the same case with R. Kelly. So when people are saying that, you know, Sony is um, behind everything that's going on because they don't want to give him back his masters, you know, that would be sort of like you owing your mortgage company and the mortgage company coming and doing something to your house when they already own the title to your house. So what would be the reasoning behind the mortgage company trying to take your home when you still owe them money and they own the title to the house and you can't get the title to the house until you pay them back the money. So that's the same thing with the masters is why would Sony ruin R. Kelly's career to hold on to his masters that they already have in their possession and they already legally own. So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, with the Taylor Swift situation, what happened is that Taylor was going to renew her contract with her record label, um, Big Machine Records, I believe is the name of the company. And so she was going to renew and one of the conditions of renegotiating her contract is that they were going to give her back her music. They were going to give her the masters to her music over um, in increments over a period of time. And I think she would get like so many back for each new album that she put out or something like that. Well, Taylor decided that she wasn't going to resign with Big Machine, that she was actually going to sign with UMG, which is Universal Music Group, who is the holder of R. Kelly's catalog. So they hold about 700, may not be 700, maybe 690 something recordings of R. Kelly's, and that's what their master's catalog comprises of for him. So Taylor decided to sign with UMG. But at the same time that Taylor was making her announcement that she was getting ready to sign with Universal Music Group, Big Machine Label Group was announcing that they have formed a merger with um, Scooter Braun and his record label. And so Taylor was upset about that merger because I guess she has beef with um, Scooter Braun and he's a representative. He works with... Um, Justin Bieber and so she has issues with Justin Bieber and so she didn't want to have anything to do with this school of Brian guy and so She's now upset because when she moves to the Universal Music Group She now has to leave her masters with um, the big machine label group And so she basically will only get like royalties as far as um, her involvement with the music is concerned And so uh, royalties are divided in different ways like you have the songwriter you have the composer You have the producer um, so all of those um, different components Depending on what Taylor contributed to her music like she may only be the um, singer of the music or well, we know she writes her music, so she could be the songwriter and the performer, but she may not be the producer. So there's like different elements of it. And so in her making that decision, she theoretically gave up her rights to her masters. And so this is important because it shows that, you know, we're on the outside looking in. We don't know what the deals that are being made between the artists and the record labels. We don't know the ins and outs of their contracts. We don't know, um, you know, what was said 
between the record label and the artist as the artist was getting ready to part ways. But we know in the case of Taylor Swift, because she went public, and then in response to her going uh, public, the guy who owned Big Machine Label Group put out this statement and actually posted on their website um, exactly what went down step by step. And he included text messages between him and Taylor showing that she knew exactly what was going on, that Taylor's um, father and his representative were part of the shareholders meeting where they actually discussed that they were going to do this merger. So this is important when we look at R. Kelly, because as we know, um, R. Kelly and Sony recently parted ways. And then for those of you that don't know, Sony and RCA are actually owned by Universal Music Group. And Universal Music Group bought the um, Jive Records and then Zumba. And so it was like a bunch of transactions that were going on over the years. And that's how um, Universal Music Group ended up with his music catalog. And so they recently parted ways after the whole um, Surviving R. Kelly series came out. So R. Kelly, um, according to reports, had two albums remaining on his contract with Sony. And so we don't know, like more than likely Sony paid him out of that contract for those two albums but we don't know what was said in regards to his masters because that would have been a part of the whole contract deal and when you think about it it probably and i've said this before in another video that it probably is in his best interest that um universal music group holds on to his masters because you know until this whole issue is resolved because it could just become like it would just turn into a mess. And then we get into why would he want to own his masters at this particular time when he doesn't have the biking, you know, like, is there somebody willing to financially bike him if he took his masters to continue to um, get royalties on the music? Because what it all comes down to is that the record label has the connections with the industry. The record label has the connections with the streaming services to get the music played. The record label has the connection with the companies that are making the CDs and putting the CDs in the stores. The record label is the one that's behind the concerts and the tours that he was doing, you know, to make sure that he had everything that he needed. And so, with him taking his masters, he would have to take on all of that responsibility. And right now he can't book concerts. Um, even if he wasn't, you know, relegated to staying in um, the state, you know, he can't leave Illinois or maybe even Chicago. So right now he can't go on tours. Um, we already know that his tours had been scaled down so much because when I went to see him, in May of 2016, he put on a full production and the concerts that he had in 2017, he basically was showing up, there was no band, you know, so he was singing to tracks and there was just like not a whole lot of production going on. And so part of the owning the masters is that you get um, to do bigger venues, you get the money to put on the productions, to pay the musicians, um, you get invited to festivals and that type of thing. And the way that the music industry has changed so much, you know, with streaming of music, the way that artists are really making their money today, you know, they get their royalties off the streaming services, but they need to be out in, in the world doing tours and doing concerts and that's how they are really making their money um, in the age of digital streaming and so i just don't understand at this point how would it benefit him to get the masters back and then as far as you know the business end of it it would just be like he would have to hire so many people so many legal teams he would need to have advertisers he would need to have PR people, he would need to have branding, he would need to have social media. It was just so many, just so many components of the whole music industry um, for an artist to be successful. And if he cannot pay those people 
to do all of these things and to assemble a team that he can trust because we already see how he's been taken advantage of in the past. It just doesn't make sense for him to have his masters right now. And I believe that that was part of the negotiations with Sony probably with something like we're going to hold on to the masters until you get through this situation and get yourself together and then we can re revisit it or there may be stipulations in the contract you know that deal with his masters once all this is over with and so we really you know without seeing the con the um without seeing the contract we really don't know um what actually went down between him and Sony, but I still contend that I don't think that Sony is behind, you know, trying to ruin his legacy, trying to bring him down, um, trying to do him dirty because it just, it makes no sense. And then another part of the whole um, music industry, you know, which is where it just gets really, 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 really complicated is that, um, you know, when you get into the copyright laws and everything, it breaks down how um, this whole thing works with the music industry. So there was an amendment made to the copyright laws as it pertains to um, ownership of, you know, authors and ownership of their, um, of their works. And it basically says that a person can get their masters back or request their masters back. It's not automatic that you're going to get them back, but they can request their masters back 35 years after the whatever it was came out so in this case we're talking about music so 35 years after each one of his singles or each one of his albums came out he could then go back he has five years to go back to universal music group and request to get the masters for those singles and for those albums but it's only after 35 years that he can do that so you figure he came into the music industry in the 90s. But within the next few years, he technically can request to get his masters back. And then if there's no reason why Sony would still be trying to hold on to him, there's no reason why he can't get them. But um, right now, if he wanted his masters back, he would have to pay for his masters. And then the other thing, um, you know, that floats around the internet is how much his music is actually worth at this point. And so I've heard numbers from, you know, 300 million to a billion dollars. And that's something else that I have to disagree with, you know, after researching this. And so basically, there's like a computation of how the master's catalog is um, priced. Okay, so basically in one way that it could be calculated is if you go back to the last two years and how much um, money has been earned off of the music in the past two years. And then they have like a formula that they come up with to calculate what is worth. And sales for his music and the streaming for his music has peaked since the whole Surviving R. Kelly series. But if you go back over two years, it really wasn't that high. And then definitely not at the same level that it was, you know, during the 90s and the early 2000s. So that in itself devalues the catalog. And so you figure in, you know, the different formulas. And, and I think the one way it goes by like the last two years of sales, the amount of money that's been made off of concerts and that type of thing. Once you calculate that, I would venture to say that his music catalog at best is probably... I won't put like I don't I, I don't think it's I don't think it's that much y'all I mean I really can't put a number on it without having the sales figures for the past two years but I would have to venture to say that it is nowhere near 300 million and definitely not a billion dollars so um, I'm going to go ahead and read um, some of this billboard article and some of the articles that have and some of the artists um, that have actually tried to get their masters back and what was the outcome. So we start with Prince in 1993. Prince was the artist most known for battling with a record label over control of his master's recordings. In his case, the label was Warner Brothers Records, which released the iconic artist's first 18 albums. So that's similar to R. Kelly because UMG has, um, even though he's had different record labels, UMG has the master's for the majority of his albums that have been released. 
And so um, 18 albums, including such monster hits as Purple Rain in 1999. With his uh, frustration over a perceived lack of artistic control mounting in 1993, the Purple One went public with his campaign against Warner Brothers by changing his name to an unpronounceable symbol. And y'all remember when Prince had that symbol on the side of his face. And so um, it hopes that the change would make the terms of his contract unenforceable. Once it became clear that his ploy wouldn't work, the singer-songwriter began appearing in public with the word slave written on his cheek. Upon exiting his deal with Warner Brothers, Prince released his next album, the aptly titled Emancipation on EMI, his own MPG records. In subsequent years, he would go on to release music on a variety of different labels, from Arista to Columbia to Universal. And he even offered his 1997 crystal ball box set directly to fans via phone and internet pre-orders after re-signing with Warner in 2014 to release new music as well as his 30th anniversary edition of Purple Rain. He finally regained the rights to his master recordings released under the label after a more than two decade standoff. So it sounds like to me that you know, he left the label because he was unhappy, but then they were able to come back together. And part of his contract negotiations with coming back to Warner was probably that they were going to give him the master. So you have to be able to negotiate with the record label to get what you want. You can't just say, I want my masters and they give it to you. And I can probably guarantee that um, part of his negotiations with Warners was that he had to make so much money off of those albums, those remaining albums that he did with them in order to get those masters back. And if he didn't reach that threshold, they probably wouldn't have given them back to him. So then in 1996, um, Janet Jackson. So Janet Jackson's blockbuster deals with Virgin Records in the 1990s was arguably the shrewdest of that decade in music. The multi-platinum star made headlines with her 1991 contract that was worth a reported $40 million, but then doubled down with the subsequent 1996 deal reportedly valued at $80 million. That latter deal was not just worth twice as much in advances, but also awarded her ownership of her masters seven years after the end of the contract, which was fulfilled following the release of her 2006 album, 20YO. Even for an artist of Jackson's statue, this counted as an exceptionally rare coup. So once again, she had to negotiate with the record label, put um, certain criteria in her contract in order to um, get the masters back, and then she had to probably reach certain milestones and it's sort of like basketball players when they negotiate their contracts and in order to get the bonuses or the add on money, they have to have put up certain numbers. They you know, can't get into any trouble or anything and then they get that bonus money. So this is the same when it comes to negotiating contracts with the music industry. So next we have um, 2001 Courtney Love. So Courtney Love's battle with um, Universal Music Group <laughs> and so it erupted in 2000 when the label sued the rocker for refusing to deliver on five albums they contracted with her band Hole. The following year, Love countersued claiming that the long-term record contract she had originally signed violated the California statute that says entertainers cannot be tied to any one company for longer than seven years. The fight broadened when Love filed a second lawsuit against UMG as well as Dave Grohl and Chris Novoselic, her late husband, um, Kurt Cobain, surviving Nirvana bandmates. In October 2001, for control of Nirvana's master recordings, in addition to accusing UMG of cheating the band out of over $3 million in royalties, she claimed that its label, Geffen Records, was not the same one it had signed with in 1991 due to Geffen's subsequent acquisition of Vivende Universal. And so, similar to R. Kelly, Universal Music Group, um, so Jive, I think, was sold to Zumba, then Zumba was merged with 
Universal Music Group or with RCA, but Universal owns all of them. So you got all these record labels and they're merging and being sold. And then somewhere along the way, these masters are being passed around and or acquired, I should say. Love ultimately settled with UMG in 2002 without regaining the Nirvana master rights, though she was most recently sued the label again as part of a punitive class action lawsuit over the Universal Studios bike lot fire um, that allegedly destroyed the very master's recording she had once fought so hard to control. And I actually had saved that story because I was going to talk about it with you all when I came across it. But basically, there was a fire at Universal Music and all these artists lost their... Um, their masters and so when i first started researching this i didn't know that masters were physical physical property then we go to 2004 with jay-z so jay-z's ownership of his masters was won not through any court battle but rather as a condition of his signing a new contract with his label def jam recordings this time as president and ceo of the company even though he left that post in 2007 and the next year launched Rock Nation as a joint venture with Live Nation under the terms of his employment agreement with Def Jam, his masters reverted back to his control in 2014. Once again, you got to have some good lawyers on your team that can negotiate this stuff so that you can... Um, Get your masters back. So the next year, he launched Tidal as the exclusive online platform to stream his music. And so this is what I was saying earlier in the video is that once you get the masters, you got to be able to put them on a platform so people can buy them and so that you can get the streaming revenue. And then you have to be able to negotiate who can use your music, like when they're doing concerts or they're out on tours or when you're out, you know, on tours and doing concerts and everything, like who's controlling all of that and making sure that the revenue is coming in. Then in 2012, Metallica leveraged their status as heavy metal gods with millions of albums sold for Warner Music Group's subsidiary Elektra Records to sign a joint venture with WMG in 1994 that returned rights to all their masters in November 2012. Upon announcing that those rights had officially reverted back, the so the band unveiled their own Lycan recordings, which now handles all of Metallica's releases via distribution agreements with WMG's Rhino in North America and UMG internationally. So <laughs> it just goes back to show how complex the whole music industry is because even though they got the masters back and they were able to start their own label, they still needed distribution for their new music and for the music um, that was in those masters that they were getting back. And so they still ended up in bed with Warner Music Group and Universal Music Group internet, you know, for their international um, marketing. But, and I'm sure, you know, the terms are probably more favorable for them because there's so much money to um, be made in the music industry that, um, that Metallica didn't mind, you know, going back and using their services, but it just shows that you can't like totally break away from um, the established music gods. And so R. Kelly has his own record label, I believe it's called Rockland Records or something like that. So he can, so once all this is over with and, you know, pray, we pray to God that he is exonerated he can then release the music that he has under Rockland Records, but it still goes back to who's going to distribute that um, music for him. And I would not be surprised to find out that if, when he does have a CD come out or new music come out, if um, Universal Music Group isn't somehow involved, and that could have been part of his contract um, when he left Sony. And so um, I know everybody thinks that Sony, you know, kicked him to the curb. But trust me, I, I still think he has a relationship some kind of way with Sony. It may not be the great relationship that he wants, but there is a relationship there, I believe. 
In 2014, the group U2's former manager, Paul McGinnis, revealed that the rock icons had acquired 100% of the masters to all their work in a deal financed by Live Nation, with whom the band signed a 12-year deal in, 20, in 2008. So once again, good negotiations. In 2016, Rihanna, following the creation of her own Westbury Road Entertainment imprint under the Rock Nation banner in 2015, um, Rihanna managed to acquire the masters of all her previous albums from her former label, Def Jam. Though no price tag was reported, given the value of the Barbadian singer's catalog, the cost was no doubt formidable. So it sounds like Rihanna bought her masters from Def Jam and she paid a pretty penny for it, but they're not disclosing what the amount was, but we can only imagine it was in the millions. So in 2016, Frank Ocean, in his own deal with Def Jam to purchase his masters, which also included him buying out the remainder of his contract, Ocean also won the right to self-release his platinum-selling 2016 album, Blonde. In a subsequent interview with the New York Times, he described his relationship with his former, lab former label as a seven-year chess game. So always negotiating, you got to always stay on top of the game. Always got to have smart people around you that can outsmart the smart people that the label have on their payroll. And then the last um, case came up this year. In February of this year, two class action suits were filed against UMG and Sony Music. They just all up in the Kool-Aid <laughs> um, by a number of prominent musicians, including New York Dolls David Johansson and former Bad English frontman John Waite for routinely and systematically failing to honor notices of termination aimed at regaining rights to their masters under Section 203 of the Copyright Act of 1976. And that's what I was telling you guys about the whole 35 years after um, the music is released, then they can request to get their music back. So under that section, artists are given the opportunity to terminate a laborer's ownership of sound recordings beginning 35 years after their release. In addition to their own claims, the plaintiffs, which also include New Jersey blues rocker Southside Johnny, former um, Nerves drummer Paul Collins and Joe Eli are also seeking um, declaratory relief that sound recordings can ever be considered works made for hire. So that whole works made for hire clause was like put into the copyright rule and it also prevented depending on how the musicians um, or the artist's contracts were worded, if it, the music was considered work for hires, then that meant that the artist couldn't get the music back, couldn't get the masters back. And so they filed this lawsuit to challenge that, um, that, part, of the, the, um, that part of the copyright law. So which under the law would give labels rights to an artist masters in perpetuity as the plaintiffs alleged, that is exactly the argument UMG and Sony have made in refusing to honor their request. And so in their case, um, they can't get their masters back right now because Sony is saying that their work was, um, they paid them for that work. So they can't get that work back. So it's very complicated, y'all. <laughs> it's very complicated, as you can see. And so I just really think that R. Kelly needs to get through this um, these cases that um, are pending against him before he can even um, think about, you know, trying to get his master's back. And then um, if he decides to pursue getting the master's back, let's pray to God that he has assembled a team or he has somebody biking him, you know, that's not going to do him dirty and that's going to help him. And that's going to help him maintain the masters and make sure that he doesn't lose them in, you know, some shady deal or somebody um, trying to sue him. Because I think um, if he owns the masters and he gets sued, somebody probably could um, take the masters from him. So guys, um, that's it for me. If you made it through the video, I know it was complicated. Um, let me know what you think. Rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I should talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.